Hey, what's up guys? Dustin Williams here. And in today's video, I want to share with you a way that creatine can have a huge impact on your digestion and on your gut health. Now, if you've ever heard anything about creatine, more than likely it has had something to do with uh, muscle strength or muscular endurance or increasing muscular size, something to do with exercise completely and nothing else. Today, I really want to kind of explore the other benefits that you can get out of utilizing creatine. Now, don't get me wrong, it definitely has all of those benefits when it comes to exercise and strength and endurance, but it also has multiple other benefits. And the two that I wanna focus on today is of course, gut health and overall better digestion. So first off, let's talk about digestion. Most of you know that in order to be able to digest our food, we need stomach acid. Stomach acid isn't just naturally in our stomach. The acid has to be pumped into the stomach, all right? It has to be moved into the stomach. Creatine is something that is very important in the role and actually getting the stomach acid into the stomach so that it can properly digest food. And if we have any type of issues whenever it comes to being able to digest food properly or having any undigested food, then the undigested food can end up sitting in the stomach and it causes a lot of bacteria buildup. Now, as we age, having lower stomach acid is not uncommon. It's actually really common to have lower amounts of stomach acid as we start to age. And if we aren't getting that stomach acid pumped properly because we're lacking creatine, it can definitely have a big effect, which as I said, can cause more bacteria buildup in the stomach. Low stomach acid can also cause uh, protein deficiencies, mineral deficiencies, and doing this kind of thing over time, just having these constant deficiencies can end up leading to long-term vitamin and mineral deficiencies, which can end up leading to a lot more problems. And even further, low stomach acid has been linked to quite a few different health conditions. So low stomach acid in general is something that we definitely want to try to avoid. Now increasing overall stomach acid is a different topic, but one way that creatine can help assist in that is by pumping the stomach acid into the stomach. It's a very important part of it. So a lack of creatine can play into this. So one of the big ways that creatine aids in digestion. The second big thing that creatine can have an impact on is our small intestine, and it can really play into the overall absorption of nutrients. One of the things that I talk with about my clients on a regular basis when they're asking me about food or supplements or vitamins and minerals is that just because you eat something, just because you take a supplement or you eat a food or you take something that contains a vitamin and mineral doesn't mean that you get to use it. You have to first absorb it. Once our food is properly digested through our stomach, it enters into our small intestine. From there, we're able to grab a hold of the nutrients that have been broken down and absorb it into our system to be able to better utilize it. In order for a system to be able to better utilize the nutrients and absorb them, we have these finger-like projections that are in our small intestine. On the ends of these, we have cells, and these cells have to be regenerated every few days. Creatine really helps power the regeneration and the utilization of these cells so that we can better absorb the nutrients once they get into the small intestine. So a lack of creatine could potentially mean that these finger-like projections aren't able to absorb the nutrients as well as they should be, which can lead again to more vitamin, mineral, overall different types of deficiencies that you can get over longer periods of time. One thing I am really interested to know is how many of you guys have actually used creatine before? And if you've used it, what kind of results have you had? I'm just kind of curious to know the average amount of uh, people that are using creatine or have used creatine in the past. Let me know down below in the comments because I'm just really interested to know this. Knowing that we get these benefits from creatine for aiding in digestion, for aiding in the absorption of nutrients in the small intestine, then the question becomes how much creatine do you actually need on a regular basis or on a daily basis to make sure that you're not deficient in it? We definitely get creatine from food. It's very prevalent in meat. That's one of the, the big uh, foods that's gonna have creatine in it. That being said, we really need to have, on average, depending upon the individual, somewhere between one and two pounds of meat per day in order to get all the creatine that we may potentially need for all of its function. I don't know too many people that are eating between one and two pounds of meat per day. I know that there's a few of them out there, uh, but I know that that's a really high amount of meat. And it, for general population, for the majority of the people that I work with, I usually don't recommend that much meat anyway. Um, there is such a thing as too much meat, even for those meat lovers uh, like myself. Knowing that it's hard to get as much creatine is what would be the most beneficial from food, this is where supplementation can really be beneficial. If you're gonna supplement with creatine, I highly recommend that you supplement with a creatine monohydrate. There's multiple different types of creatine out there, and I'm not saying that the other types of creatine are bad or that you should avoid them or stay away from them. The reason that I recommend a creatine monohydrate is that the majority of the research that we have around creatine is on creatine monohydrate, and there's tons of research on creatine monohydrate. That's why I recommend that one over some of the other ones. 
Now, you may have heard me say before that not all supplements are created equal. It's very important that you get the right one. If you're gonna take something, you're gonna put it in your body on a daily basis or on a semi-regular basis, you wanna make sure that it doesn't have any additives, it doesn't have any fillers, it doesn't have any of the extra junk that's in there. So you wanna make sure that you get a good quality creatine monohydrate without all the extra junk in it. As far as dosage, my typical recommendation for my clients is anywhere between three and five grams of creatine monohydrate per day. Anywhere between three and five grams is typically a good number. The great thing about creatine is if you get it in the powder form, it's basically tasteless. You can mix it into a drink, into a protein shake. Uh, I mix it a lot of times in my orange juice in the morning. Can't even tell that it's in there, can't taste it. It mixes in really well. It makes it very, very easy for you to utilize and take creatine without really noticing it. I will put my personal recommendation to the brand of creatine monohydrate that I recommend. I'll put it down in the description below. You can click the link. It'll take you directly over to it on Amazon if you wanted to try to purchase it from there. If you found this video helpful at all, don't forget to smash that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you make sure that you don't miss out on any more of these super informative videos that I'm putting out for you. I'll see you guys in the next video.